Uh, 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 uh. How long have we been trapped in here? Look man, we got out. We gotta we gotta defeat Captain Ghostbeard, the man who's trapping us here. We only have one shot at this. I'm gonna show you how to be good at Isle so that you can take him down without dying. Let's go. <laughs> Warning, some side effects to completing armor include addiction to collecting gold, warning full scallywag, repeated murder of ghostbeard, and collecting all items. Proceed at your own caution. Ramsack the captain's quarters. I'm gonna teach you how to parry. All with one hand. Put it sideways as they're attacking, and you're good. If you got two, put them in a cross like this, and you'll be good to go. Remember, I'm a certified Isle Pro. I mean, look at my, look at my pirate drip. Rumor has it, there's a little gold behind here. However, don't use the cannon. You can team kill really easily with it. What you can do, however, is these right here, you can walk through. They're, they're just ghost shelves. So come in here, and you got all the gold to yourself. If you have the chance to get some, I highly recommend the stools. <coughs> they're a one shot, alright? So, they're pretty useful. The only downside is that they break after one hit. So just find something else to pick up, put it on your back. And then you hit them and swap out the other. So the bottlers. You can block their throws using a weapon. I recommend the broom. And, uh, they're pretty easy, you can just dodge them, or block them using your weapon. And then you just take them down, just like that. Frying pan. And after all that hard work, you can treat yourself to a nice grog. Juggers are a unique species, to say the least. So they're basically just the bottlers, but explosive. Counter them the same way as you do the bottlers. Something cool is that also you can actually catch their jugs. While you can also do that with the bottlers, it's a lot easier with the juggers and more rewarding since they're explosive and just a lot better at killing enemies with. So um, try catching their jugs. Now prepare to watch my beautiful demonstration. In case you're wondering, yes, I did beat those drunkards to death. Now tips for the cannons. Usually it's one per cannon, but I like to do. So one person on that side, one person on this side. But of course I'm playing by myself right now. Also, never pull down the bridge until all of the enemies that usually spawn before you take it down are gone. Because otherwise you're just going to be overwhelmed with enemies, or some on the ship, some over there, it's a bit ridiculous. You can do it all just using the cannons. Let me show you. That's all the enemies. Before the bridge, gone. So now, you do the only other way to take down the bridge. Obviously there we didn't do it all just with the cannons, even though I was supposed to. I kind of messed up on the bridge area there, but if you have two, they could just shoot directly in their face from that angle. So, that's how you do it with only cannons. Use it, because it really changes. <laughs> it, 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 oh, it helps a lot. You may notice over there, some enemies with flintlocks. Now, flintlocks are the, the long range weapons in this game only get after this stage. Now, they're just guns, pretty much. Uh, and they take some getting used to, but they are really effective once you know how to aim with them. So, 
you might not get it the first try, but you, once you once you get the hang of it, you can use these pretty effectively. Let me demonstrate on these uh, these poor seagulls up there. There you go. That's all of the seagulls that are in the sky, out the sky. Always aim for head, because it's a one shot, and you only get two bullets per thing, so... Use them well. Now this level introduces a brand new type of enemy. I forgot his name. But I'll show you. Here he is. He's in a cage, and the only kill him is to explosives. Which he throws at you, and you need to throw back at him in time to kill him. That's pretty much it. He's... He's not a very threatening enemy, I'm gonna be honest. But, you know, he's there. He's, he's, he's just along for the ride. Bruh. There are a lot of easter eggs. There's a Jumbotron one back there that I forgot to show you. But, but you've probably already seen that one somewhere else. There's a less known one, still you probably know about it, but I'll show you anyway just in case you don't. So, up there you may see a few glows, you know, a, a few a few glows, a few chests, you know, you know, we all like glows in the chest. If you pile a couple of boxes up on top of each other, jump up. Not only do you get access to the wonderful chests, but you get a blunderbuss, and this is the only blunderbuss present in any other quest apart from Crescendo. And this quest came out before Crescendo. Let's see angle. You can use the torch to block and attack enemies. So if you have no more, uh, no more weapons, but you have a torch, you can uh, just the block stuff. And it takes a while to kill them, but you, you definitely can. Your bite. See, I'm recording this in first person, because it's just a lot easier um, for this part, for the boss. Uh, you can do a skip by going around here, and it basically allows you to skip the first batch of enemies. Those are really annoying, those guys over there, so it's quite nice to be able to skip them. You can't go all the way over there. Well, I think there is a way, but I'm not quite sure how you do it. So what I usually do is drop down here. This little hole, and then... Dodge the mines like a real pro gamer. You get some guns and you take out. Yeah, it's, it's a minor skip, but it's, it's a skip that's quite useful, especially if you're speed running. You don't you, you you don't need to deal with like half the enemies that are there. Pretty much. So, but it's, it's quite nice. It's simple, but it's nice. Then you get one piece here. Jump on this. These enemies will spawn. It's pretty obvious, but I forgot to mention that before you get the runes, you need to actually kill the enemies that you spawned in. You just get the two runes from this place and in the in the boat. You gotta jump up for that one though. Uh, and yeah, you got you got them both, and then it allows you to just easily walk up like this. And there you go, you have all of the, all of the pieces. Apologize, but I need to do a voiceover for this one because I kind of wasn't explaining at all what to do. So you want to start by rushing onto the boat and just killing absolutely everyone. Did you catch that? No? Alright, let me just go over what Enrion did. So, you heard Ghostbeard's voice line. Nobody leaves this island with my treasure. So, right when he finishes the word treasure, you want to light the cannon. And that will time it correctly, so that the moment Ghostbeard spawns, the cannonball will collide with him. Once again, let me mention that the only way 
to damage Ghost Beard is through the cannon. Then you see him sort of kind of spamming uh, the torch over uh, the cannon's lighter. Now this is actually done um, so that you can light the cannon once again and sh fire another cannonball out as soon as you can to damage him before he can essentially get up or so that when he immediately does get up you'll just immediately hit him again. And the point of doing all this is you can hit him three times during the first time that he spawns. So that you don't need to worry about him at any other time. You just need to take down a certain amount of enemies and then he'll just... They'll just die and you'll hear his death sound, but he won't spawn because you've already killed him beforehand. Uh, and it, it, it just makes the boss fight a lot easier and it's a really good tip for if you want to beat Isle. Holy shit, I'm